Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we begin tonight in Waterbury on the imminent shutdown of Abbott Terrace Health Center. Tonight, staff and residents are fighting to keep the facility open. Thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. The nursing home will close in less than a month. Medicare and Medicaid are pulling federal funding. The facility failed health and safety inspections multiple times. Fox 61's Kay Patty Foote is in Waterbury now with what residents and health care workers are saying tonight. And these people need a place to stay. They don't want to leave. We don't want to lose our jobs because here is where we eat, we pay our rents, and we got to take care of our kids. Healthcare workers are facing the unimaginable in Waterbury. Save our home! Save our home! Look, I'm 63 years old. Do you really think I want to be out here looking for another job? I'm looking forward to retirement, you know what I mean? Yes. Because I get attached to the, uh, to the residents just like they do. Abbott Terrace is home to over 100 residents. But because officials say Athena Healthcare systems have not met health and safety requirements at the facility, they are losing federal dollars and will have to shut their doors. We were quite upset, okay? We were distressed and we were alarmed. And the reason for that was that we had received word that the federal government, the Center for Medicaid Studies, had terminated Medicare and Medicaid payments to this facility effective at the end of this month. Athena Healthcare released a statement today stating, we continue to make every effort to collaborate with the Department of Public Health and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. We appreciate the support and passion of our residents, families and employees as it acknowledges the vital role that Abbott Terrace has in the community. Pleas from residents continue. They'll send me out. This has been my home. They've been good to me. It's scared to death. I have nowhere to go. I have, my brother lived with me before, but when I came here, I can't get up and down stairs. I can't do anything like that. So when they said they were gonna close this place, I was really scared. Mayor Aid Painter, the state's long-term care ombudsman said, for years, this facility has neglected necessary repairs, failed to update the physical plant, and has not provided adequate support for residents or staff. This is not an isolated issue, as we have observed similar concerns at other facilities operated by the same corporation. In a joint statement from the Public Health Commissioner and Social Services, they say the decision by CMS was not taken lightly and this had to be done because of the repeated failures of Abbott Terrace's owner and management team. Residents will still be covered when they move to a facility that participates in Medicare and Medicaid. In Waterbury, K. Pattyfoot, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Kay, thank you. Right now in New Haven, police are on the scene of a double shooting. It happened sometime around 6 o'clock this evening in the area of Rosette Street and Cedar Street. And that's in the Hill neighborhood right next to the Metro North Rail Yard. Police tell us one victim is in critical condition, the other in stable uh, condition in the hospital tonight. Their identities have not been released, and we will update you as soon as we learn more. Time now for a first check on the weather. Expect fog for your morning commute. Haven't said that for a while. I know. There's also a chance for some much needed rain on the forecast. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank timing it out for us. I think a lot of us might be going, oh, rain. We have to think about that again, right? <laughs> we really need it. We are rooting for it at this point. Is it going to be enough to make up for the rainfall deficit? Mm, not even close, but I guess at this point we'll take what we can get. But first, the fog that'll be developing as we head through the overnight hours and especially towards daybreak tomorrow. Beware of areas of low visibility and that could add some extra minutes to your morning commute. So check in with the Fox 61 morning show crew. It looks like that fog won't get its act together until after tonight's partial lunar eclipse. We're going to go into this in a lot more detail in just a little bit. But in case you're laying in bed and you're wondering, do I want to get up later? I wanted to at least let you know that this is going to be happening here. It will start to get underway in about 10 minutes or so, but it peaks 
at 1044. This is not a total lunar eclipse, just the top 8% will be blocked by the Earth's shadow. And again, we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Temperatures right now are in the 60s for most of the state, upper 50s for Wyndham and for Torrington, and most of us are in the 50s as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. So at the bus stop tomorrow, areas of patchy fog, whatever you had out there this morning, you can expect a repeat performance tomorrow morning. And I don't think we break for as much sun as we had out there today. So I think overall it's mostly cloudy, but still mild with high temperatures in the 70s to right around 80 degrees. We're going to talk about those increasing chances for showers as we head into later tomorrow and tomorrow evening. Your full forecast is coming up in just a bit. All right, Rachel, thank you. Right now, state police are in Thompson investigating a suspicious incident. Now, take a look at the scene at Brandy Hill Road. Traffic blocked off there. You can see several state police SUVs and cruisers. Uh, troopers have not said what exactly they are investigating, but say this is connected to a call they received around 8 o'clock this morning. They say there is no threat to the public. Our team has calls out trying to learn more, and we'll update you with more information as it becomes available. Another Connecticut school's facing threats, this time in Westport, and two at the same time. The superintendent says there was a threat etched into a bathroom stall at Staples High School. Police determined it was not credible, but they're trying to find the student who made the threat. And last night, a student was arrested for a threat made over social media. Unfortunately, threats have disrupted multiple schools across the state recently. And today, in New Milford and Bloomfield, police were alerted to threats towards some schools there. We asked an expert what's behind this rash of threats. It's just part of the symptom of this day and age we live in where people are using social media to express their anger and their outrage. And sadly, uh, right now that is coming across through these thre uh, school threats. I, I think we, we have a, a drastic need for social media literacy in, in young um, classrooms in schools. In Westport, school carried on as normal. Both threats were investigated and found not credible. A 16-year-old girl is in the hospital tonight. Hartford police say she was shot during a domestic incident. They were called to her house at 1230 this morning. She is seriously hurt, but doctors say she's in stable condition right now. Police have not said where the shooting happened, only calling it a confidential location to protect the victim's privacy. No word on any arrests. Police are still investigating tonight. And the FBI is working to determine if an envelope flagged by postal workers in West Hartford is dangerous. Officials tell us it matched others sent to election offices in more than 15 states across the country today containing dangerous white powder. The envelope is being tested at the state lab. It does not appear that it was opened before it was flagged. Playoff fever in downtown Hartford tonight. The Hartford Yard Goats are in the playoffs for the first time since moving to the capital city. And there's plenty to be excited about with this Yard Goats team. The Yard Goats are facing the Somerset Patriots in the Eastern League Divisional Series. Game one goes to the Patriots, unfortunately. Final score three to two in a close matchup to start the series. The Goats are on the road to start the series and to celebrate fans gathered in downtown Hartford to cheer on the hometown team. Fox 61's Jake Garcia was at tonight's watch party where playoff baseball means big business in the city. It's not just fans that are excited about the Hartford Yard Goats playoff appearance. Small businesses are also feeling the hype as game related events bring thousands of dollars into their businesses. Go Yard Goats! From good food and cold drinks to live music and of course live goats. Hundreds of people flooded Pratt Street Tuesday night to watch the Hartford Yard Goats kick off their first ever playoff series since moving to the capital city. And I would have never thought that we would have been in the playoffs right now, but I'm telling you the environment here, the music, the food and the merchandise is amazing here. Game one on the road against Somerset gave the goats an idea to pack Pratt Street for a watch party and local businesses are feeling the wave of excitement from fans. I think it's awesome. You know, this is our first time in Harvard. We were with the yard goats we were in the yard goats stadium so that was really cool so being able to see them do really well and keep continuing to cheer them on is exciting for urban lodge brewing no matter the day of the week fans always show up to support not just the team but local businesses as well we're definitely getting more in for the happy hour crowd like yes we get happy hour but we're seeing more people coming in with their yard goats gear and stuff which shows that they're here for the watch party which brought them into harford which is cool 
for new small businesses like this coffee shop and tattoo parlor combo. These events help promote their business. People are usually very stunned when we say we're a coffee and tattoo shop. So, you know, they see the coffee sign and they're like, oh, let me, but wait, what's going on? And so now it's a nice icebreaker. It's a soft landing for people to come in and kind of get to know the space and all of the business get to really, you know, benefit from all of the foot traffic. Hartford Chamber of Commerce officials say the city cashes in when local teams do well, and they plan to continue to hold events like these. So the fact that they're extended their uh, their season by making the playoffs is a huge coup to the, the business community that's here in, in the city, the restaurants uh, and everything else that, that support that is supported by the fans coming to these games. So uh, we're super excited again that they made the playoffs, and we have at least two more games here uh, to cheer them on. The Yard Goats are expected to be back here at Duncan Park for game two of this playoff series on Thursday. Now a third game could be played on Friday if the series is tied up, which means more money for the local economy. Reporting in Hartford, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.